A Florida woman stabbed her drunk sister with an EpiPen because she's allergic to drunks. Young Florida women dress up as grannies to scam coronavirus vaccines. Porn viewership in Florida shot up 15% after the Buccaneers won the Super Bowl. And men at a Florida hotel pose as U.S. Marshals to avoid wearing masks. These are the weird stories for Friday. As always, the weird news on Friday is from our favorite state, Florida. Yes, it's Florida Fridays on Weird AF News. I'm so glad you're here. Let's do it. A drunk Florida woman stabbed her sister with an EpiPen because she's allergic to drunks, she said. A Florida woman was arrested in Naples after allegedly stabbing her sister with an EpiPen multiple times, claiming to be allergic to drunks and hoping that the injection would sober her up, the police said. Uh, What's the name of this moron? Joanna Zielinski, age 62. She's facing domestic battery charges after this incident with the EpiPen and her lovely sister. Police responded to the home in Naples at 10.30 p.m. after someone called 911 from the area and then hung up the phone. Officers connected with the woman who said she was drinking alcohol with her sister, Joanna, before falling asleep on the couch, leaving Joanna to drink more and take drugs all alone. The woman said Joanna, quote, went crazy, attacked her with an EpiPen, stabbing her multiple times before calling 911. So Joanna called 911? (laughs) <laughs> I've stabbed my sister because she's drunk. Don't worry, it's an EpiPen. It'll sober her up in no time, as EpiPens tend to do, as you know. I'm very familiar with an EpiPen, by the way, because I have a nut allergy. Uh, the police asked Joanna why she called the police. She responded, saying, Well, you know, I'm allergic to drunks, so I injected her with the EpiPen so she wouldn't be drunk anymore. What is the big deal? She actually is quoted as saying, what's the big deal? (laughs) I'm allergic to drunks. I injected her with the EpiPen. That'll sober her up, right? That's what EpiPens do. I read the side of it. The paramedics evaluated the sister and discovered Joanna didn't even hold the EpiPen properly. (laughs) She didn't even inject her with anything. It says the medication was not even injected injected into her. She didn't even inject it with the EpiPen. So even if your theory was correct, Joanna, you crazy person, that the EpiPen would sober her up, uh, you didn't even do it right. This is a story of sisterly love. Two Florida sisters. They both have drinking problems, but one of them wants to heal the other one of her drinking problem. Really cares. She's just very misguided in the um, traditional alcoholic treatment procedures. Young Florida women dress up as grandmothers to get coronavirus vaccines. And it worked, kind of. The two young women, believed to be in their 20s, dressed up as elderly women wearing bonnets, gloves, and glasses so they could get the coronavirus vaccine. And their trickery worked at least the first time. Uh, Dr. Raul Pino from the Florida Department of Health in Orange County said these two women were busted when they tried to get their second vaccination shot on Wednesday at the Orange County Convention Center. Here's a quote from the doctor. We haven't had any lack of willing arms to get the vaccination, of course. We also have people faking to be old in order to be vaccinated. So yesterday, we realized a couple of young ladies came dressed up as grannies to get vaccinated for a second time. So I don't know how they escaped the first time, but they came back to get vaccinated, wearing bonnets, the gloves, the glasses, the whole thing. And they probably were in their 20s, I'd say. (laughs) Oh, you don't know how they escaped the first time? They were dressed as grannies, Pino. Come on now. Use your doctor brain to wrap your head around what happened. Just piece it together, Pino. They've been dressing up as grannies the entire time, I think. Dr. Pino noted that security has recently been increased at this vaccination site where about 2,500 shots per day are administered to those aged 65 and older as well as healthcare workers. Um, Instead of dressing up as grannies, you should have just dressed up as a healthcare worker. That's what you do. Dress up as nurses. You can pass for nurses in your 20s. You can't pass as grannies when you're 20 years old under that bonnet lady. 
Dr. Pino says he's not sure how the two young women were able to get their first doses. I just told you, Dr. Pino. They dressed up as grannies. What is the confusion here? You see what they're doing. Hello, where there's smoke, there's fire, doctor. Use your doctor brain. How many years of schooling? <laughs> they showed up on Wednesday to complete the series. They even presented a valid vaccination card. Dr. Pino's like, how did they get it? They dressed as grannies, doctor. That's how they got it. These are degenerate Florida women trying to get their vaccination, stealing from the elderly, no doubt. This is not the first time that ineligible residents have tried to trick their way into getting one of the coveted shots. Here's another quote for this brilliant, from this brilliant Dr. Pino. So, you know, there have been a few. They're all different and creative. There was another individual I remember that had the same name of his father. So he came with a card but a different birthday. But, you know, we have access to a lot of information. So we can quickly verify who is who, where they were born, you know, anything that you can imagine we have access to. I still don't know how those ladies got that first one. Because they dressed as grannies, doctor. I'm trying to fill you in here, sir. You not listening? Still, Dr. Pino knows the two young women aren't the only ones to slip through the cracks. I think it's higher than we suspect, you know, to be honest with you. As we are engaged in this process, trying to move people quickly, some people could squeeze in, so it's probably higher than we suspect. You know, I, I still don't know how those grannies got the first shot. It's because they dressed up as grannies, Dr. Pino. Grannies. They're dressing up as grannies. This is their plan. It's a granny plan. It's a granny vaccination plan of 2021. Porn viewership in Florida shot up after the Buccaneers won the Super Bowl. Yes, porn viewership was bumping in Florida after the Bucks won the Super Bowl, led by Tom Brady. According to a release from Strip Chat. What is Strip Chat? Is that another one of these porn sites? Oh, you kids and your porn sites, you have so many. Ah, I'm old school. I remember Red Tube and you porn and what is this Strip Chat, huh? What is this? Viewership on Strip Chat in Florida shot up 15% after Tom Brady earned his seventh ring. Uh, but why? Why does porn go up after that? Um, during the Super Bowl, traffic was down as much as 14%. Yeah, that makes sense. The Super Bowl's on. Who's watching porn? At kickoff, traffic was down 11%. Okay, so some people were like, oh, this, you know, let me, uh, let me watch the beginning of the game, then I'll put the porn on. <laughs> it says here, the author of the site wrote, of this article, rather, wrote, I love when porn websites dump their data following major events. Pornhub has done stuff like this before, and the numbers are always fascinating. And then there's a link to something. I don't know. I didn't know these porn sites like to post their data. You can all pretend like you're not interested in the viewership numbers, but I know you are. There's a 15% increase in porn traffic uh, after the Super Bowl, typically. Pornhub's traffic is uh, usually up 14% every election night. So the Super Bowl numbers, they say, seem to be what you'd expect, given the data that they've seen in the past. Well, they've just been tracking porn data. Who cares? Well, I mean, obviously, if you own a porn site, you give a damn. But, I mean, are, are we going to, like, give an explanation? That's what I want to know. Let me see. Why would it be up on election night? Because, of the, I mean, people are either disappointed in the election results, and so then they, they, they throw on some porn to forget their cares, their worries, or they're... They're extremely elated by the election results, and therefore they want to, you know, do a celebration rub-out. That makes sense as well. Watching it after the Super Bowl, I'm, I don't know why. I mean, in Florida, look, at you guys haven't won a Super Bowl like since forever, right? Long, long time in Tampa. And therefore, I'm just curious as to, is this a celebration porn? You watch porn? I mean, there are so many other ways to celebrate that are better than porn, I'd imagine. I mean, celebrate with somebody else. I mean, everyone is excited. Don't they want to get it on? You could probably really snag a stranger at that point to, uh, to touch you because they're just, everybody's pleased and, and probably drunk, I'd imagine. Very drunk after the Super Bowl in Florida. It's just Florida anyways. I mean, everybody's just drunk anyways in Florida all the time, I'd imagine. You can't find a person in Florida to have sex with. I feel like I'm covering stories where people just having sex at the bus stop outside of... A Carl's Jr. Like, no one gives a damn. People are just dropping trowel for no reason in Florida. Like, why would you can't find somebody? You got to go to porn. But who am I to judge? <laughs> you like podcasts? You're listening to my podcast. Maybe you thought to yourself, I'd like to make a podcast. 
Too difficult? No, not with Anchor. Anchor has free creation tools that allow you to record and edit your podcast from your phone or your computer. Anchor distributes your podcast to Apple, Spotify, Stitcher, and more. They have advertising integration, so you can even make a little money off your podcast. Everything you need to make a podcast in one place. Download the free Anchor app or go to anchor.fm to get started. And good luck with your podcast. Good luck with your creation. Good luck with your life, man. Men at a Florida hotel posed as U.S. Marshals to avoid wearing masks. Two men are accused of pretending to be some badass federal marshals flashing their phony credentials. Why? Well, they wanted to get out of wearing facial coverings at a South Florida resort hotel. When the staff at the Wyndham Deerfield Beach Resort asked Walter Wayne Brown, Jr., age 53, and Gary Brummett, age 81, to cover their faces, these men refused to cover their faces. They threatened to arrest employees and saddle the hotel with a big fine. <laughs> oh, you told me to wear a mask. I'll th- arrest you. It's, I mean, right away, you got to be like, this is ridiculous. You don't, because I told you to wear a mask, you're going to arrest me already. And by the way, you're 81 years old, Gary Brummett. How are you a U.S. Marshal, 81 years old? Too elderly for that. The scheme, the scheme to not wear masks collapsed when one employee, I love how this is their scheme. Hey, man, you want to be on vacation at the Deerfield Beach Resort with me? Okay, Walter, but I don't like to wear masks. What will we do? Well, maybe we'll just tell them that we're old and we forgot our masks. Yeah, but then they might send us to the gift shop where they probably sell some really tacky Florida masks that say, you know, Deerfield Beach Resort on them. Oh, yeah, good good point, Gary. Maybe we'll, um, how about we tell them we don't, we don't, uh, we can't have anything touching our face because we got poison ivy on our face and I'll just rub some uh, rouge on our face so it's red and they'll see that it's a red face and that it looks like poison ivy and they won't force us to wear masks at that point. Well, I don't know, where Walter. I think that might be a bad idea. I don't really want to wear rouge the entire time I'm on the thing. I mean, the point is to not have my face covered. I don't want nothing on my face, not a mask, not rouge, not anything. Oh, all right, Gary. What what if we tell them we're U.S. Marshals and that if they tell us that we have to wear a mask, we'll arrest them? Well, now now I think you're on to something, Walter. I like that one a b- bit better, you know. Uh, we'll get some fake IDs made. My nephew has got a... He's really good on the computer. And <laughs> that's a good plan. We'll say we're U.S. Marshals and then they can't tell us to wear masks because we'll arrest them. <laughs> Kill yourself. Kill yourself. The scheme collapsed. Back on the article. That was a scene I was dying to act out. The scheme collapsed when one employee thought they were acting very suspicious. Oh, really? Yeah, they were acting suspicious by saying, oh, we don't have to wear masks. And if you tell us again, we'll arrest you. That's enough of suspicious. They called the police. Officers and a real U.S. Marshal arrived, arrested the men on charges of impersonating a federal officer. Good, I'm glad. I would have loved to have been there to see these two morons get arrested. What a dumbass plan. You are dumb, sirs. I hope you listen to this podcast in your prison. Walter and Gary. A hotel manager told investigators Brummett went to the front desk earlier this month to ask for a coffee, and they pretended to be a marshal when he was asked to wear a mask. Oh, they're giving me the the backstory. He flashed a, uh, this is what they had on them, a laminated card that said he was medically exempt from wearing a mask. Yeah, we're going to get this card that says we're exempt because I think people have a card. What is medically exempt, Walter and Gary? I want to know. I mean, if you don't have a chin, you just anatomically don't have a chin, you can't really hold a mask. If you got no ears, you're just born without ears, then I suppose you'd be, you know, you can't hold up a mask without ears. Then you would be medically exempt from wearing a mask. According to the complaint, when the manager of the hotel asked again for him to put on a mask, Brummett pointed to a badge he wore on his belt. Do you know what this means? I'm a U.S. Marshal and can have you arrested if you force me to wear a mask. <laughs> yeah, that's what my friend, that's what my friend uh, Walter told me to tell you. <laughs> yeah, you know. Hey, thanks everyone for sending me Florida articles uh, all week long leading up to the Friday show. Appreciate it. I appreciate all of you who have participated in some way. 
whether that be leaving me a nice review on Amazon or iTunes or sending me an article or just dropping me a little message saying, what's up, Jonesy? I love what you do. You bring me joy. You help me get through a bad time. All that shit. I just appreciate it. I love it when you reach out to me, when you participate. Uh, phone number to the show, as always, 646-450-2012. The email is funnyjones at gmail.com. You can reach out to me on Twitter at Funny Jones, on Instagram at Funny Jones. I got new patrons, and I want to give them some love. Uh, meet Julie. Yes, Julie is a patron. Uh, I have no last name here, but you know who you are, Julie. You joined the Patreon, and you have a, a pound sign next to you, the dollar amount that you've um, that you've joined up at. So I assume you're from... You from are you from London, England? Are you Julia? Oh, yeah. <laughs> uh, Julie from the UK, I assume. I'm grateful. I'm so grateful. Uh, oh, she has dot UK in her email. Okay, yes, yes, she's from the UK. I knew that. Look at guys, I'm a super sleuth. Okay, you know what I'm talking about. I'm like, you know, I'm I'm able to put clues together. All right, <laughs> why I'm not in charge of shit? No clue. Julie from the UK. Right, Julie from the UK has joined the Patreon because she's so debonair. Debonair? I don't even know what that means. Julie, right? She's a bomb contributor to Weird AF News. Big time fan, right? Big time. Thank you, Julie. Please enjoy the, uh, the content that lies within the Patreon. You've unlocked it. Uh, I actually posted something yesterday pretty funny. I posted a, an article with the what I think is the most hilarious Florida mugshot that I have ever seen. It was a story I didn't cover last week, but I, I just loved... I held on to this <laughs> the story because the mugshot was so good. The story was lame, but the mugshot was so damn good that I wanted to use it somehow, and I'm like, what do I do? Um, you know, unfortunately, Weird AF News is a podcast. It's not really a visual... It doesn't really have much of a visual component, so anything visual that I come across, I'll usually just post it into the Patreon. Because in there you can post uh, videos, photos, links, and all that crap. So it's just it's just a little richer of a format. Um, so yeah, I put that in there. It's really hilarious. Please enjoy all that, all that um, weird AF material, Julie. And you too, Wendy M. Wendy joined the Patreon. Wendy M. And uh, I'm so appreciative. I hope Wendy um, gets a chance to check out the the material that's in there. Mater- I keep calling it material. What is wrong with me? The weird AF. Extra stuff, that's what I'll call it, because I'm, <laughs> with my highfalutin language and vocab, the weird AF extra stuff, hey, please enjoy that, Wendy. Uh, yeah, listen, Wendy, I'm grateful that you joined the Patreon as well. I'm grateful for both of these new patrons. It makes me feel so warm and fuzzy inside when I open up the email and I say, oh, you have a new patron. Oh, you have a new patron. It has their name. I'm like, yay, feeling the love. And that makes me want to sing an LTD song. What is LTD, Jonesy? Look it up. All right. <laughs> Why don't you look it up and enjoy the sweet sounds of Jeffrey Osborne? <laughs> Sorry, I'm in my own world right now. Uh, things are going great. Just great for Jonesy. Yes, yes. Uh, listen, I hope you're having a great weekend. I don't know when you're listening to this. It could be Friday. It could be Saturday. It could be Sunday. Maybe you've stopped time. And you're listening to it on your spacecraft. Uh, either way, please uh, uh, have a wonderful weekend. Hope you enjoy the Florida stories. Please be safe, whatever you're doing. Um, and uh, check out the Patreon if you get a chance. It's patreon.com slash weirdafnews. Or go to weirdafnews.com. Thanks for everyone. Um, thanks to everyone that sent me Florida stories. And I will see you after the weekend on Monday. Have a great time.